some plants, like if you look at them in the numbers between them, some plants need more attention. You know what I mean? Some need some are right just the way they are. They just need to be watered regularly. But some plants need to be removed. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and in your garden, sometimes you just get rid of some trees because they're causing a problem. Yes. And, you know, and so um, so some roles you might want to delete because it's so flexible. You can also have fantasy roles. Like problem roles are a big part of it, but fantasy roles are things we haven't started yet and something you dream, a dream role. Like, like for example, if, if um, you're doing this with teenagers, a lot of their roles are dream roles because they're not allowed to do anything yet. They're allowed to know about it. They're like, you know, because I've got a 16-year-old. Yeah, they're allowed to know about sex. They're allowed to know about drinking. They're allowed, they're allowed to know in detail about everything, but they're not allowed to do it yet. Yeah. Right? So so, um, so a lot of things that when you work out um, an adolescence thing, because they, they just want to fill the day in neurobiologically. They get a do double dopamine hit for novelty, so they're entertained easily if you can get them to do the things. And they just want to fill the day in, but they're still they're still in a stage where they're not actually um, um, uh, being their full selves yet, because a lot of their roles are future of going to uni, you know, getting a partner, all sorts of things. They're like some people get them now, but a lot of are in the future when you're a teenager, and some things you're trying, or you're doing a little bit of. Teenagers are going to need so much support being grounded and secure moving forward. There's bizarre laws being passed. They need, the, the world. They need their own little they need their own you know. little gardens that they can work on. Yeah. So every parent needs to know this. So, you know, people need to really be able to share this and understand it and know it so that they can support all the little humans in their life as well. Well, my son's 16 and he does this and he's doing very well in all of his areas and he's very keenly aware of it and he's like reaching goals in a really beautiful way. Yeah. And um, it's interesting to see a teenager working on it, and um, because because it's really it's really functional. Because you could do a um, it's like if you've got a roll out of balance, like just say um, people have never thought much about something spiritual and they want to do it. It creates a section for it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's okay to never try something before. You can try things any time. You can always learn learn something new. Yeah. Oh, that was what I was going to say. The other thing that this would be helpful for would be, you know how they're starting to use social credit systems? This actually sets you up for protection from that because it lays out, you know, so you can actually strategize against something like that by using a system like this to make sure that you've got all your checks and balances in place. It's like you can say, no, I'm doing this. You know what I mean? And you can yeah. develop those social roles if you need to because of some... Uh, totalitarian thing. I mean, I was lucky during the pandemic, I had this. Yeah. And I was growing my garden during the pandemic and kind of enjoying being at home and not caring very much because I had all these, oh, I can play music, I can do all these things. I was at uni, it was like, oh, this is fine with me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, the 15-minute cities will work very well for someone who's got all their little gardening bits in place. That's the most bizarre thing I've ever heard of. That's Oxford in England. Yeah. Yep. Being integrated next year. Is that really true? Like I, I hear that stuff and I can't even. Yeah, no, it's real. absolutely true. You know, they passed it. They passed it in the local councils. I know. So it's already passed. They got it on the local council level. Yep. It's hard. It's hard to make things go back once you put them in legislation. I know like legislation. You know, people say, "Oh, but you know, it's not like they'll ever use." It. And you go, "Why are they passing the legislation?" Like, you know, as of March this year, 12-year-olds and over will be able to choose euthanasia in Canada to help them through mental health illness. Like, I That's just so am disgusted at the way governments are passing things around the world. I, I um, as a, as a, so in counselling, the accreditation boards make ethics out of these things. And, um... And are they going to make that a type of affirmative care if someone's a it's kid called says they want to suicide? Yeah, so it's no, but I see more things becoming affirmative like that. Like if you're a professional, they only give you one choice of what you're allowed to do. Yes, and and you're not allowed to take into the like, for example, um, so. 
suicidal kids killing themselves? Yeah. That really says that, doesn't it? I yeah, saw it seven, on the news, 17th it was... of March they're planning on passing that and because they've got the because they've got Under the numbers, the... it will go through. I heard that they said that it was for because in adolescence they divide divided up and not teenager, not because in, in some but of the But we know this is a slippery slope. We know if they pass the legislation, then they are planning on making this easy for people. And yeah, they said they, used... they actually discussed it and they have no intention of telling the parents before it happens. Right. So much of this stuff is undermining the parents. Really? They said that? Did yeah. you see that? Yep. To hide it from the parents? Well, the same way that they're pushing the positive affirmations on kids who are confused sexually. You know, they're also doing this with uh, kids, you know, and in the same way it is uh, parents, well, it actually said mothers, mothers can choose to euthanize a disabled baby up to 12 months old. So oh. it's it, they're really oh, extending. Really? really? That's in, is that in the legislation, really? No, 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 it hasn't been passed yet, but the uh, drafts are out there and okay. people are discussing the draft legislation that's going to be voted as the other as the youth in Asia thing, because I know from the accreditation boards with the um, with the what do they call it the gender thing, um, I don't think you've got any choice but to send them down that path. Yeah, and so no matter what you think as a counsellor, um, although I've got some counsellors who just counsel people with um, um, gender identity issues. And um, but I'm not sure what. I but just it's feel like there's quite there. a dark path with some of this. They call it affirming, yeah. you know, but really it's very confusing, and not. Well, the problem is you can't even talk about it in public without getting in trouble. Yeah. And um, so a lot of professionals just well, you just tick the box and you go, okay, send them there, because what else are you can do anyway? Yeah. I mean, it's a pit. But um, it'd be good. Um, this is where I love doing kinesiology but, because part of but what bringing I'm doing... it into but they're but they're they're often little kids and you know I can't say anything about it because of my own accredited ethics but um, I'll talk I won't talk about that but I will talk about the assisted suicide thing I think that because I I, I read a little bit of that and they said mature children yes mature right? children from twelve years that, old. Right, that's what the word was. And in um, counselling, yeah, it's like with consent, you know, I mean, it's the general rule is they have to be 16 to have full consent without their parents' support. But they use this word mature, mature young adolescent. But yes. mature child is like... Um, oh, I it's MAID, medical assistance in dying. Right. No, but I saw the word mature child and... And um, I don't know how these people think about their own children because I've got a 16-year-old and a 10-year-old and a 26-year-old, but they're just little babies. Yeah. And they're certainly not. And and what? And the, the, Was it really saying without their parents' consent? Absolutely. It it's, seems to be similar to if a child is con confused with it, and I know you can't discuss this, but it seems to be similar that if a child is confused with their sexuality, that they can bypass the parent and the teacher can take the child to a doctor and start the process without parents' permission. So that's definitely happening in South Australia and Victoria here in Australia. Assisted suicide. No, no, no. Starting the transgender process without parental permission or knowledge right. and right. that and one of the discussions I was listening to in Canada was saying exactly the same thing that you would simply be at home and your child would not come home because the doctor or nurse or whatever this thing the undermining the undermining them. undermining the family thing is I find very concerning and um and, you know, it was in one area, now it's moving into another area. And you kind of go, because um, the thing is with suicide is that all the data shows that the families of people who commit suicide 
um, blame themselves. Like if 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 you have a because I did a lot of research on young people and suicide and self harm, and when somebody's child usually because um, kids all commit suicide not that early, when yeah. kids commit suicide, it's the numbers are get stronger between sixteen and twenty four. Yeah, but more they're up around eighteen and and so they're like they're like little adults, but. It's one of the most devastating things that can happen to any family. Yeah. And so, and to not allow them to grow into, I mean, if, I mean, you know, that's, I just can't, I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Say. I just, you know, and I did hear some of the quotes. Well, what, what if you end up with that client of, if I'm a counselor and they've been to referred to me? And I have to affirmative that. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be that's going to be devastating for everybody involved in the process because they're a little kid. Yeah. I mean, they could wait till they're eighteen until you like brains develop. They're prefrontal. So for a start. No, for a twelve year old, for goodness' but sake. But the parts of the but the parts of the brain that um the even the reward bits aren't developed yet. They don't develop until like sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. And um oh that's really that's really sad, isn't it? Oh, and yeah, like... because suicide, anyone who's ever known anybody, when I when I was um a teenager, one of my friends committed suicide and I just saw the devastation around them. Yeah. And all their families and people never recover for the rest of their lives. You know, and a lot of these things that are being taken as as we've talked, the superego is socially normal. Yeah. When they change socially normal to a, to an extent where um where what what's normal is um little kids assisted dying. I mean, you know, this stuff started in the behavioral sci in the behavioral psychology with um that Australian um philosopher Peter Singer and they were talking about this stems out of the debate of quality of life for disabled people. Yes. Do you know what I mean? That they yes. didn't have a quality of life and they used it with animals and they were trying to adapt it to human models. I remember that. Peter Singer was saying that. He's an Australian ethic ethicist, I guess. Except when it comes to little kids, um, they're not actually making choices by themselves anyway. No. And because, because the parts of their brains that make global choices, yeah. so global choices, global goals are, are progressive life goals. They don't, so localised perspective that addicts have, that teenagers have, that doesn't finish until after your prefrontal cortex develops. Yeah. So starting to think about future goals and future and orientation. And when's that? Like in the, they say they don't, so you see, and the pattern is that teenagers go through their adolescence, they go through young adulthood from, you know, 18 to 20-something, and they basically, most kids just have a party and relax and yeah. get a job and they're not really, and even if they're going to uni, they're having fun. Right. You know what I mean? They're there because being, being a young adult is about having fun. Yeah. And then, and the reason is, is because, you know, girls develop a little bit faster than the boys, but the part of the brain that it's, it's the part, if the reward system develops earlier, so the, um, so kids get addicted to things easily because uh, once because once something gets approved in the reward system, you can just keep having it. It'll just, I want that, I want that, I want that. And then with the prefrontal cortex, which uh, the whole top of the brain, which regulates global behaviour, doesn't really start kicking in until after it's fully developed, you know, between 23 and 25. Yeah. And then a few years later, people start thinking usually about having kids and, you know, I mean, all of those future-orientated yeah. things. So... To not allow people to get to that age, yes, right where their brains develop, to me is the um, biggest concern. Yeah, because how do they know? Does that mean that because they're dependent? Does that mean that the ideas that are ha that they're having is coming from somewhere else? Because I don't believe they'll start having their own ideas that are fully their own ideas until they're twenty five. Yeah, and of course right? we're so, hearing so in the these media. ideas. So this 12-year-old who says they want to die, whose idea is it? Yeah. Where did they get the idea? 
because we know from all of the studies that if they put a program on Netflix or the television about suicide, it causes social contagion and the suicide rate goes up every time. Yes. So, and and they use this excuse, oh, we're trying to understand suicide better. Yeah. But, oh, sorry, a whole bunch of people just killed themselves because you put the show on TV and there was a big controversy over that. Yeah. And so the internet, my, my thing is, is that is that really that little kid's voice? Because yeah. I don't believe you. I don't believe you really have a voice until it's after 18. Yeah. Because you're not finished growing yet. Your brain hasn't finished growing. They know that girls 22, 23, boys 23 to 25. Yeah. And yeah. so so if and because they glo- because the global perspective which is future orientation kicks in then suicide is about future orientation. So who are the people putting the ideas into the kids' heads? I don't believe it's their own thinking. Yeah. And I and I also know from a not, not only people I know, but I've talked to counsellors who've worked in all day with kids self-harm. You know I mean, especially girls cutting themselves, really common problem. They all do it in groups. One does it, then the next does it, then, and they're oh. all doing it together. And there are and Facebook kind of groups and online groups about how to do it, you know, so you get the best benefit without killing yourself. Like there's there's so much information online about how to do it so you get the right. most sympathy and the most um dopamine right the most important thing here is that we say to anybody listening if you're having any suicidal thoughts or issues actually get in contact with the there's help lifeline or um suicide helpline there's all sorts of lines that people that you can get in touch with about this because i know we're talking about this so i just want to put that in no, if you have right. these issues Seek yeah. help, and if you know your kids are, uh, seek help from um, whatever helps available. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. such a that's such a that's really interesting going through that because future perspective starts doesn't start until later. Proper future perspective, global goals. Some kids get them early, and they slowly, you know, because the localized perspective in teenagers slowly bridges over over time. But really, the genuine future perspective only happens after the prefrontal cortex is finished growing, right? And here we are talking about 12-year-olds and claiming that they have a future perspective, a global perspective where they have decided that their global future outcome is so bad they want to stop it. That's extraordinary because they're not old enough. They're actually not old enough to actually have an individual perspective. Yeah, that, I didn't know that. I knew that in the study, but putting, laying it out like that, really into that, yeah. sad. And I was listening to an interview with a guy from the States yesterday and on the day after Thanksgiving, just gone, they passed a law so that there is no, I think, the Human Health and Services, I don't think it was the CDC, I think it was the HHS, they passed or they changed legislation so that there is no expected level of health care for people with mental health. In, in So until now, like you said before, you know, mental health is one of the things that you mentioned, our scholar here in Australia, there's like a expected level of care we should be able to have with people. They've okay. removed that in the States. And in the last three years, they have 40 million more people on government social security so they had 60 million oh, because of the, the pandemic. because of the pandemic yeah, yeah it's now 100 million people and he was saying that if they are removing expected health care and they're moving towards things like the social credit score and things like that so who knows what they will insist that we do so that we can get our little you know bit of money from the government he said these are the low-hanging fruit that, it, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Well, in, in the US, you can see very obviously if they're doing that, what's happening. Like um, the homeless situation there is an incredible phenomenon. Like in every city, there's just whole suburbs full of tents. Yeah. You know, and a lot of the people are um, addicted to drugs, but a lot of people just can't afford a house. Yes. And so 
and and a lot of people in those groups have um mental health problems yeah you know i watch a i watch a um a youtube channel called soft white underbelly and um this guy interviews homeless people. It's really amazing listening to their stories. And really, so they've cut off a tier of um Yeah, they've support. taken away a level of protection or, a yeah, so it was something like that, you know, that basically. Was that, so that, was that so they could afford to pay the people who were made unemployed during the uh, pandemic? Who knows? You know, there, there's been, there's all sorts of other things going on with money around the world as well at the moment. You know, like, um the G8, G7, back in 2017, 2018, all of those countries had to create a bail-in legislation, which we passed here in Australia, you know, so bailouts. So you remember back 2008, 2011, mm -hmm. yes, so whenever that was, and the government bailed out, you know, this huge thing that caused a recession around the world, well, the G7, G8, you know, they decided that they were going to create a bail-in so now everyone who has money in a banking institution or a superannuation, we are now partners with the bank. And so we will have to bail in if the World Bank or whoever comes to Australia and says we want our $1.3 trillion back. Australia doesn't have the money. So we are has Australia you know, got, now has being Australia lent got a, Is that our debt now? Oh, something like that, 1.3. We went up over a trillion dollars during the pandemic somewhere. Did we really? So, so we have now got past legislation, but it was back in 2017, 2018. Took about four or five years. It was when Obama was in Brisbane. Remember that when yeah. that was about 10 years ago or 10, okay. 12 years ago? So that's when they created the need to create this bail-in, and that has happened with all of the G7 countries. So at some stage when whoever the banking moguls are, they come to Australia and say, we want our money back, we have bail-in legislation. Right. And they can oh, take well. the money out of our bank accounts, they can take the money out of our superannuations. So, right. don't... Well, so... in the financial crash, a lot of people lost a lot of superannuation anyway, and a lot of the governments had been putting their the money in Australia, what they got off the federal government, the state governments were putting in the stocks and bonds markets, and so they lost too. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be an interesting time moving forward. And it's, uh, yeah, there's, anyway, there's just all sorts of shenanigans going on with legislation all around the world associated with everything financial, right. health and freedom from what, as far as well, I all about the, It's all about the baby boomers retirement fund. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they want them. That's the X generation. The X generation are coming on board now and they kind of took everything off us before we started. So I know we've gone off on some big tangents today, but it's nice doing a Joe Rogan with you. <laughs> that was really, that was, that was really interesting about the, um, the suicide. I didn't. You know, yeah. when you put it in context, that they're not somebody who has a future orientation yet, that isn't, they're not actually there, but yeah. they can think about the future. I find that very strange. Yes. Yeah, there was, like, I can't you know, remember what it was called, but there was a TV show starring, uh, who's the tall, blonde, beautiful chick in uh, the UK, about 60 years old, short, blonde hair, she she's aged beautifully. She was in a TV show back in 2018 where they were covering things like global crises and climate change and all these kids were choosing to be part of the equivalent of a metaverse. So I'm opting out of life. I'm choosing to go be in this little metaverse. So I'm not a footprint on the planet. I'm not choosing oh. to be part of this. And parents were like, what do you mean you're choosing to be, you know, and the metaverse is just an example. That's not what they said in the TV show. But Emma Thompson, Emma Thompson. And I watched the first two episodes. I could not watch another episode. It was so oh. disgraceful with the pre-programming from five years ago with what they were putting out there. What, what is it? Well, it was about children choosing not to live on the planet. Right. Children choosing 
but they weren't saying assisted suicide. They would just go live in the equivalent of a metaverse. So taking their consciousness, going and putting it in some sort of, uh, you know, I haven't watched it, so I can't say. But in the last couple of years, I've had lots of people say, oh, my God, have you oh, seen this series? There's some weird stuff it's I saw atrocious. the other day. Thing, thing, we're, thing we're having an open chat today because I normally won't go. I saw this thing the other day on TV. Someone showed me, actually, called Body Sheets. Sheets. So they've got the sheath. P-H, oh, okay, like right. Artificial body that you can put your consciousness in. And the other thing I saw that was related is they've got, there's already organisations able to do it. They've got baby incubators. Oh, they're horrendous. People don't think oh, that's oh. real. Let me see if I can find that because one oh, of those, said like, one I, I of know, those but places, I advertisement. One of those places can make up to 30,000 per year babies. And what makes me think about how disgraceful it is is the fact that they are where is it no nope, they've just got normal incubators anyway but they basically you know you wonder what is going to be feeding it that's oh, possible it that might have been true it looked like the thing i saw was a promotional video and um oh it's absolutely it's 100 true here it is and all they're waiting for is legislation can you see that? Baby yeah, and I saw an article. Yeah. And what is text, Ecto Life? So this and you is text your voice to December them and... last year. Well, I guess so. Yeah, it says, have you ever what? imagined a baby being produced in a factory like environment in what looks like a scene from Keanu Reeves Matrix? A video of rows of babies being grown inside a pod. But what worries me is that there's no heartbeat for that baby. They're saying it's a germ free environment. The whole thing about mother's breast milk, mother's wombs, crawling out the birth canal is about priming your immune system, priming your not immune only, system. So we are removing only, that from children. Not only, not only that, but the relationship between the mother and the baby. Absolutely. Is producing um, oxytocin. And as, and immediately, so the studies are is is the longer the mum can be with the baby because mums have a particular type of nurturing that dads don't have. That is um, the reciprocal because you know they they're working out that babies can reciprocate all the time. As soon as they're born, they reciprocate back. You know they go. They're not really smiling. They are. It's like they can. And so there's a hormonal exchange of oxytocin, and so that's already going on in the womb. And that oxytocin exchange, they found in the studies that people who get less of that have less self-regulation, they can't control their emotions. And so you get kind of like, and of course, statistically, that's not in every case. Yeah. There's a lot of people, kids who grow up in a perfect family environment become psychopaths or, do you know what I mean? So there's no, it's always a statistical average. But when I look at that, I'd say the statistical average is, is that, like you say, on the hormonal level, on the, I'm um, sorry. What do you say on the um, di oh, you, digestive the microbiome, level? the germ level, that heart connection. You know, like mm. the heart's an electrical. It's an electrical mm. uh, organ. Like that electricity between mother and child is so important. But also oxytocin reciprocation and so Absolutely. many things. Absolutely. That's so gone from formula feeding to this. Just shocking, and no, uh, so that you don't have to mess up your vagina. Yes, well, it said for women without wombs. Just saying. Oh, is it? A, oh, so they're starting as. I oh, they're don't starting know, with but a, that's what they're saying. Oh, so it's just IVF on steroids. Yeah, that's what totally. they're saying. And because okay. there's so many different types of families out there these days. No, but I know that. But I know that some people do have surrogate kids, so they don't have to damage their. The JJs. Um. um yeah, yeah, they're JJs. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's a, it is an interesting time moving forward, and I wonder what little conscience, you know, what are these little humans that they're going to create in there? Are they just going to be perfect little government, you know, stooges? You know, they don't have a thought that's come from that connection between their mother and father and the seven generations of stuff that's supposed to be in there from birth. 
Like, how's well, it going to screw with all of this? It is, but it is something that is in Brave New World. That's how yes. they made the babies in Brave New World. Like, kind of, okay, yeah, everyone's talking about 1984, but I'm always looking for the Brave New World. Yeah. Assisted suicide, that'd be Brave New World. Like, um, I actually had a client in here the other day and her son, he's like, oh, 2021, one of his best friends was wearing a metaverse jacket. Mm. And the mother, who's uh-huh. very awake, she said, "What? Well, what's this? What's with this metaverse jacket? And, of course, it is a wearable device. Oh. So the whole time you're wearing this device, it's like, an, it's like an iWatch or a phone that's connected to your health data or um, anything that's in your body. You know, we've got people using the little chips in their wrists, you know, like, Mm. you know, there's lots of countries that are doing those now. We've got the quantum dot technology in lots of African countries with the Billy Gates's, you know, um, quantum dot technology so that they can know exactly. That holds their medical record. Yeah, exactly. So they know how many uh, jibbity jabs they've had and stuff like that. So there's lots of this stuff out there, but this metaverse jacket allows these kids to have all their information going to the data. So when they are in their 3D world of the metaverse, it's got all of their data in there, so it's a more realistic experience. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So it's like building up impressions of their body the whole time. Man. It's getting very interesting. And the World Economic Forum the last two years in a row has talked about wearable devices for tracking and tracing because, the you know, we're... Well, you're better off tracking and tracing your roles. Yes, you I would much agree. Better, you're much yeah, so, so better bringing outcome. it back to uh, the roles. And you, can develop, and you can develop your internal garden. We've got our own metaverse. We've got our own internal video screen that we don't use. It's three-dimensional and you might find yourself in there with a guide or who knows what. But, you know, it's like, um, there's, yeah, well, it's like Jung says it's just all pushing the external out, right? And he goes, the Western institutions are all, and so the inward flow, right? The inward flow isn't inward. happening in the West. And the, the well, the metaverse is an example of it, inward. What do you say? Close the joke. Yinward. Yang. Yang is external. Yin is inward. Yin is y- right. Inside. Yinward. So yinward. That's really yeah. nice. Yeah. Yinward. We got to we got to get more yinward. Yeah. Because this um because this stuff with the um especially the baby pods, except you know like all liberalisation happens with a uh like an emergency. Yes. Do you know what I mean like like for example so we've got. Um, women who don't have worms, so we're making it. Yes. Except about thirty thousand in each town. <laughs> yeah, it's but, a but, pretty but, big facility. That's a big facility, and you kind of go, oh, and and so the liberalisation happens for emergency, like um, and then but it becomes mainstream and part of the super ego, and it no longer is a liberalised, unusual thing for an emergency situation. It now becomes part of the super ego where you've got a right to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And so a lot of things that, you know, like um, I think that um, something like divorce, do you know what I mean? Like um, we're living through a lot of the unintended consequences of mass divorce that started in nineteen in the mid-70s. Yes. And I'm not saying that the, re- but the original reason that they set that up is because women were being abused, men were being abused, Kids were being abused, and some people cannot get on and needed a way out. But then it becomes so it was originally for, except a good in Australia reason. when they originally for a very good reason, and then but in Australia when they brought it in in 1974, I think, I think there was a two year waiting list in the divorce courts to get through because there was such a massive bang at it, so many people, and you know, and rather than like. In my view, the psychology, the current studies on things should be good enough so that people who are a bit iffy should really be able to improve their relationships. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Maybe it's a bit too expensive for people, but um, I see a lot of people breaking up who didn't need to break up. Yeah. And all they, all they went over was got with someone worse in some cases and 
Just put well, the they haven't fixed them. anything. If you haven't actually done any any internal work, how are you going to find a better relationship out there? If you well, haven't the analogy... worked on yourself, if you haven't worked on you being out there in a relationship, if you haven't worked on being a partner and a friend and a lover and a, a person who is willing and able to connect with people, how are you going to find a good person out there? Yeah, in, in couples counselling, it's the idea that um, two people are on the edge of a divorce and they've come in to see you and they've both got a really long list of what they want the other person to change, but they don't have a list of what they want to change in themselves. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that's the part of that. It's that I hope people get on better and they have beautiful relationships and become deep soulmates. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe they need to change the marriage word and put soulmate in there so that people actually start doing what they're supposed to. Like yeah. I, I noticed when we're writing our relationship up, we put soul relationship in our roles. We put both put soul mate, and I've seen other people encouraged to do it like that because that's what's really going on. Yeah. It, when things reach their potential, that's what you're becoming, aren't you? Yeah. Not just a wife or a husband. You know, you're becoming soulmate. You're becoming close you know each other really well you know where your points of irritation and goodness are yeah 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 i hope people can get on better and all of these polarizations aren't helping people getting on so we can get people to be a bit more holistic about start with themselves and maybe extend to their families and a little bit at a time i mean all this stuff all this stuff in the world's good for business for me so yeah well yeah Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, Unfortunately. Know, right? Yeah, no, 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 it's all no, good. No, that's my humour. I'm just like, oh, this is good for business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember early business. on in the pandemic and I saw Russell Branch, he was interviewing a woman who's a divorce coach. It was in the first six right. months. And, uh, and she was really excited because she said, oh, this is great. We're getting six times the amount of divorces. And he sort of did his little blurb saying, uh, don't you think working on people's relationships would be a good idea rather than being excited that divorces are up six times? Anyway. People have got such bad skills. And, and another thing, it was on the ABC, it was, and, and I was reading an article about it while at uni that a lot of people are going to individual counselling when they've got a family or a couple problem and that isn't helping very much because... Yeah. Um, if you really want it to work, you need somebody who's like trained in couples and family counselling, or because that's what I did my yeah. major in. Because they they don't use no they use all the counselling techniques, but they use system therapies too. Do you know what I mean? And look at generational patterns because a lot of a lot of the things that come up for us in our relationship we learned as kids through social learning. Yeah, and so we, you know it's just like come through like that. Yeah, and, and you, it's so and, subconscious and unconscious we don't even think about them. You know, how many belief mm-hmm. systems do we have that no longer serve us, you know? That's, and even, that if, even if it's as basic as I am fat, Christmas. I am lazy, I am freckly, I am ugly, I don't deserve the best, you know? You know, what do we believe as a little kid because we were told it over and over again by people who didn't love us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're ugly. Yeah. 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 I, I remember that. I still think I'm ugly. I say to my, my wife, I go, oh, he goes, you're good looking. I go, no, I'm not. I feel ugly. I have ever since I was 12. 12, interesting. <laughs> you know? Well, Lucky I don't know. There were I no laws different. there at the time to it. What do you mean? Oh, you know, the uh, assisted suicide laws. Lucky there was nothing oh, right. around. Like, thank goodness we right. made it through our teenage years, for goodness sake. You know, like people our yeah. generation, there was there was crap going on. Like imagine having that as a rule. I could go to the hospital, say this is what I want, okay. You know? Wow. It just it's just I think I find that I, I just find I find that particularly strange because of the stage of brain development is you know, because yes, what, but you're thinking yeah. logically and consciously and with empathy. That's not what these guys yeah. are doing. Yeah, but there's something else about this too that um, so no, it's just got me thinking because in family therapy, there's these two points that if something happens, it can be devastating. Like, like for example, if if your parents separate between when these lower parts of the brain are developing between um, one and four, there can often be really severe grief and um, 
the side effects of that, but but also um, for teenagers between twelve and fourteen, if um, like parents, because the study on the study on kids and separation and divorce is fairly, I mean, it gets almost pushed under, but the data is there, and um, kids whose parents separate during those early teenagers can be really. Um, have long-term effects on their mind. They don't feel loved. They don't feel like... Because they're old enough in that age to sort of know a bit what's going on. Yeah. And if they just never see their dad again or their mum, which is less likely in that case, but um, they just think that... So they'll go, men don't love me. I never deserve to be loved. Do you know what I mean? Those things come about when they get separated from an adult at that age and a lot of parents divorce when the kids are that age. Yeah. And, you know, so you so I wonder about the suicide. There's also an increase in suicidal patterning. Like, for example, I read in Australian studies, because we get a lot of the data from the US, but and, um, and because you have to engage in, like, the ethics of counselling is equality of families. In other words, you're not allowed to say that this family forms better than the other. And that kind of covers up a lot of stuff. Like, within these are Australian studies on the Australian government website, and they're showing the ratios between children with step parents in the home. And they found that self harm was four times as much, major self harm, four times as often if there was a step parent in the home. And so, so divorce is one thing. That's amazing. That we live. Yeah, so so the and there's other ones. There's other ones around that that are suicide related as well, that are nearly the same ratio. So it's like um, so divorce is one thing, right? So everyone goes, you know, so divorce is a right, and that's okay. I think no fault divorce law is good, although yeah. that's not really what it's like because everybody takes what appears to be civil action against if someone did something wrong anyway. So they might as well kept the old fault divorce laws anyway because of what happens in the family court it seems to be except um the thing is is that people aren't just divorcing people will nearly often separate and be with someone else already they're already having an affair and then they're subjecting the kids to that new person right so what what and i very believe early about on this in whole the thing is, right and so so the thing is is the so these kids will, yeah, that's right. These kids will have a traumatic effect from the grief and the loss because grief and loss has just as big a side effects as trauma and abuse often. And so um, ironically, and so what you've got is two things going on there. The story's not being told properly because one thing that's happening is that the parents are separating from their kids, but they're also putting another adult in the home that the kids didn't choose or doesn't necessarily like. Like and sometimes abuses them because the abuse rate of step parents is like that happens to higher rate sexual abuse, you know. And so, you know, so it's um. I wonder if because they're because they're adult decisions. So I make because when you see adults divorcing, they say they're doing it for the kids, but then you see the statistical effect on those kids, and you're like, well, did you really do it for the kids? And and then they get into another relationship with another guy or another girl who often the kids don't get on with. They certainly didn't do that for the kids. Yeah. You know, so, I'm, you know, so, and that just makes me wonder about that whole thing about in the empathy studies where those traditional caring and social caring roles, you know how I remember growing up and how the community would just jump into things. Helping, do you remember? It's not like that anymore. Everyone's become, everyone's become more depotentialized, you know. Yeah. And so, and so those um, power and control things that are, those traits are growing, they seem to be crossing over with situations like that, where so you know because the empathy for the other. Yeah. Well, first we start with our own part, gender, you know, and our partners. Yeah. Do you know I mean, if there's no empathy, if you can't, you know, something, I don't know. And I think this is where, you know, a lot of the so-called freedom movements or the or the people who are out there doing community education about, you know, big 
global shenanigans going on. They're trying to build communities again. They realise that this has been lost. They realise you've got to know your farmers. You've got to know your, you know, you've got to know your neighbours. You've got to know people within your communities so that if something happens and there's not enough food, we've got connections with people. It's not like we're going to, you know, it's it's really important to build that as well from a, it's during World War II, I think, uh, the government asked people to grow their own food, to take pressure off oh. the food supply. You know, yeah, big, in, in, in England, they're called, they called victory gardens. Yeah. So whereas mm. uh, governments are passing legislation so that you can't grow your own food, there's weird mm. legislation being passed around the place. So they're making everything very challenging and difficult to create that community and to, you know, they're just making things still silly. You know, but people don't know about it, and these laws keep getting passed. People don't know about it because they go to work and and they're too busy. Yes, people are busy, and but people are working. Really... Government gets away with stuff, but they're busy too. Do you know what I mean because there's this thing going on where if people are so busy, they don't think of a holistic way of seeing themselves and others. It's quite possible that their administrators. Who are running everything do the same thing they work all day and go home and watch tv yeah. the rulers of the world and the and they're the and they believe what, mainstream media and everything going on without thinking for about it well mainstream media seems to say things without thinking about it all the time i'm sure they're being paid well to say what they're thinking to say what they oh, didn't that start in australia with um the murdochs where Corporations were allowed to buy sections of the paper and then you couldn't have anything that was against those sponsors. I think that started in an Australian Well, even model. with, um, so one of my aunts gets both the Australian and the Courier Mail and in both of those major Australian news uh, newspapers, they did not mention Novak Djokovic winning the Australian Open. Really? Was not, they mentioned the women's finals. They did not mention the men's finals at all. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. One of my aunts really? reads them from beginning to end and there was not a word. That's how much that's... they did not want to put it out there that he had won. Interesting. Yeah, that's so bizarre. It is bizarre. Yeah, right. That is a funny thing, that. isn't it? So, so, and so that um, I think that it's interesting because what I see about the mainstream news mainly and the reason that I'll watch alternative news sources is because they leave stuff out. Yeah. Right. What you just said is the common reason that people are searching on the internet to actually find out what's going on because the mainstream news, it's emissions, right? So it's the same thing. It's the same thing as with a lot of things where um, the people making the emission get away with it. The person being loud, do you know what I mean? They, 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 everyone's pointing at them because they're making themselves really obvious. Yeah. But it's the same thing in families. It's often the neglect that causes the greater problems than, say, an abuse. Yeah. You know, because, like, for example, with um, with abuse, and they've done a lot of research on it now, you know, some kids aren't in a family of five, some are and some aren't. I don't know if it's cut down the middle, but, but, um, and with the, but with neglect, and the subtle things like, because neglect in a, a family situation is the same as leaving out part of the news that's important. Yeah. It's like no one understands what's going on. Really, they left that out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, say so they hate him for something. Gee, that's that pretty incredible. Be. Yeah, isn't that amazing? He was allowed to play here, though. Allowed. Allowed. Well, Meanwhile, Dr. Can... Peter McCullough hasn't been approved to come into Australia for next week, so he's going to be doing some talks all around Australia. So, so far, they haven't approved his visa. But he's just a normal guy. Mm, one of the most cited. He's more cited than Dr. Fauci now. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently as of last week. <laughs> Which Peter I'm... McCullough. Yeah. Is he's he that... Awesome um... in... He's the cardiologist. Does, does he do that um, peak, prosperity, peak prosperity show? I don't know. He's got his own uh, podcast. And I know yeah. he's, yeah, he's a cardiologist. And uh, yeah, he's I know. The, yeah, anyway. 
that's just funny. Australia doesn't like people who don't follow their narrative. Right. But they're just researchers. Yeah. They're really highly qualified people. Isn't he like, isn't he one of the most um, cited? Yes. He might be the yeah. most cited person in cardiology in the world. But he was that before the pandemic started. He absolutely was. He has been on many, many boards of efficacy for medications in America. He He's a mate. He's a, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's amazing. And he's been across right. mainstream media speaking for three years. He's spoken at Congress many occasions. Well, that, but, why they, but he spoke in Congress. Why are they leaving out? Isn't he just a normal doctor, researcher? He's, he's like, published he's a like book. the best in his field. Yeah. Oh. He's published a book with, because um, he's speaking with Dr. Marrick. Um, oh. Anyway. So they don't want him to come to Australia. They they haven't approved him yet. So so far we've got tickets. I'm going. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, since when do people have to be approved? Is he on a list of people who are bad? Is that what? It is? No, no. Do you remember the? You know the VAXXED movie from about six seven years ago. Oh yeah, the one that got cancelled. Who was that? St- yep. St- so was Ken Hent, Ken Hent, Hank and Lively, was not allowed into Australia, but he ended up making a good. Um, he had some fun with it. He sent a letter to whoever was the prime minister at the time. I think it was Malcolm Turnbull, and basically wrote this big thing about Jibbity Jabs and how he would meet him and he'd be fantastic to chat to him and how he was going to do this uh, big science education thing all around Australia. So he basically wrote this thing knowing that he, and Peter Dutton was the uh, person at the time who got to approve him or not approve him. And he said, absolutely not. So he's one of the foremost hated people that isn't ever allowed to come into Australia. Oh. David Icke's another one. Anyway. Oh, he's a, the, but, da- at, but David Icke's a podcaster. It's not like... um. He's not the top of his field in something. Anyway, a, anyway, no, 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 no. It's category. just funny. It's just funny he hasn't had his visa approved yet. But uh, certainly no. they're expecting it's going to go ahead, but it hasn't happened yet. As of yesterday morning, it hadn't been approved yet. Isn't that funny? I've seen him talking a couple of times, and he seems, like, really nice. Oh, he's phenomenal. He's a great guy, right. and he's very no, really factual. Nice and, yeah, he, he's great. Well, we really should round up, to uh, yeah. David, and um, yes, that's been great. Well, we'll get back to get we back did. to being whole, and I'll get back to ignoring all the stuff in the world and um, focusing on my roles because once you get into them, I mean, who cares what's happening in the world? Those big people, I can't change what they're doing. And if I, uh, I interviewed James moment. Roguski this morning about the international right. health regulations, and he said the word ignorant. He spells it. He says it differently. He said as he calls it ignorant. So when you're ignoring something, you can mm. be ignorant, but you are choosing to ignore it, which makes well that, you... che- well, that tunes into what we're talking about, about neglect. Yeah. And, you know, so so if you think about the word ignore, neglect, and then what's the word after neglect in law? Uh, negligence. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. right. And so, so that's tautology. So, yeah, so, you know, Ignore, neglect, and so so the mainstream media neglected to put what's his name, Dokovic, on TV on the paper. Yeah, that's amazing. Isn't it? Imagine doing that. They left out the. I just never heard of anything like that. Yeah, and he is he's been like the number one in the world for something. Like, I think it was three hundred weeks or something. Three hundred and seventy weeks. He's been number one in the world now, even yeah, missing those incredible. big tournaments last year. Like, he's phenomenal. Oh, he's legendary, isn't he? He's, yeah, and he's, he's an a... awesome human being. Every time I hear him speak, I just think he's a lovely, spiritual, kind, empathetic human being. Right. Like, he does a lot of internal work. He's a good human being. Oh, he does, huh? Oh, well, yeah. I haven't no, seen he, him. I've heard him talk spiritually to people. Right. I don't watch the news, so he, oh, he is, a, is he really? Isn't that yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Well, that stuff isn't on the news, you crazy person. Right. Oh, well, you could think, you know, like, I don't know, 
a lot of sports people go to counsellors because after they win, they collapse and they need yeah. help up. Um, well, he's got a three-year-old and a six-year-old and, you know, so yeah, he's right. looking forward to spending time with his family. Oh, he's got little kids. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good he could come here and win it then. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. I think it was so bizarre last time. So I'll bet he knows all his identities <laughs> by the sound of it and works on them all. He'll be goal-oriented there. Well, most um, major sport people are and yeah. they consider everything very seriously because one little thing can wreck their career. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's been awesome. Um, All right, love your work, Madonna. Nice. Yeah, Daddy. that's great, David. And, Steve, uh, I normally, um, I normally get a bit. Um, it was interesting to talk about those more serious things. Yes. The Canadian thing really gets me from the brain developmental point of view. Oh, it's 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 disgraceful. It's disgraceful. It's uh, right. Yeah. It's. Well, without yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I just sit there and wonder about things. I try to get not too emotional. I just think, and I kind of think, and why Canada? It keeps happening in Canada, doesn't it? Yeah, well, they're so left. Well, it's not left. It, it to me, it's global and everyone else. You know, the globalists. But these things, but aren't these things coming out of the public services rather than the politicians? Like, where does it come from? I don't know. Like, because it's like we're sorry to just bring it back. Like, um. Grass Tyson said, it's like, is that, who are they talking about, the public servants or the politician? Or, do you, do you know what I mean? Like, this is internationally, you can tell by this, there's a whole collective of public servants working together in the West who all seem to have agreements on all these points. Yeah. And the politicians get the blame for it, but sometimes... And there's all these much. unelected people in the background who have connections but, to... But it's always, it's always like that, and the most um, uh, the most um, thing that we know about is because of um, America, because they get so much media, and lots of presidents, presidents say they talk about when they get in, and when they get in, they realise they can't do very much because the yeah. public service is already doing what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, it, and like JFK tried to go against that. That's the public service group. Yeah. And he didn't do very well out of it. He no. And when I brother. interviewed, yeah, when I interviewed Dr. Rima Labo between Christmas and New Year, and she's been a GP for nearly 53 years, and she was actually in the Rose Garden the week before JFK did his speech. Right. That was about secret societies and how these, um, Oh, I saw I saw that years ago. That yeah, so speech. so that speech, which is amazing, she was mm. in the Rose Garden as a child when he spoke that the next week. So she always wow. had this sense of connection to human beings as opposed to globalists, to community as opposed to uh, big business, and you know. So she just had this unique perspective as a little nine-year-old kid. I think she was mm. nine. There must be something about the um, decline in empathy that comes from, because they're groups too. Like, and when you look at some of the things that have, some things that have happened over the last few years, you can outwardly say that um, as even even though they're emergency conditions, they're not empathetic at all. Like, no. you know, like, like when you tell people not to speak to each other yes. over the fence, you're and not even you close to them. And when you do actually have a look at the changes they want to the international health regulations, which is what I did my podcast with uh, James Roguski on, one of the things that they want to remove is the word dignity. So oh. India is wanting to remove 13 words from the international health regulations, which feeds oh, into the World Health Organization so that we no longer need dignity to be part India of wants the to World take that Health out? Pardon? Does India want to take that out? Yeah. But there's oh. but there's like 46 pages of changes they want, you know. So, right. uh, and all of that is in my my interview with James, James Roguski. So, you know, a lot, of that, a lot of those words are like greenwashing. They talk about it, but that's not really what goes on. No, but yeah. they're also they're also changing to the word shall something like two hundred and fifty six times during there. So instead of things being a suggestion, they're changing it to shall 
which of course has in a legal terminology that means that it's must the mm. uh i think it was sri lanka no not sri lanka indonesia maybe they there is like a another word that's for suggestion but basically they're changing it to must so there's all of these countries all of these countries have got all of these changes they had to have all of their suggestions to the International Health Regulatory Agency, a meeting which finished on the 13th of January this year. And then the following week, they had like a World Health Organization meeting. The following week, they had a World Economic Forum meeting, you know, and we've just hit February. <laughs> yeah. Well, lucky I, decided, weeks, I was, lucky, I was lucky I'm a conspiracy therapist. I, I was chatting to a doctor this morning from uh, from New Zealand and he was saying like what, so Jacinda, so she was speaking at the World Economic Forum and she did this big speech the day that she quit, by the way. So she quit New Zealand, then she went off to the World Economic Forum, did this big speech mm. about how we have to take away natural therapies and did give you? them to big pharma to oversee. Really? So only big pharma approved natural therapies is what they want but isn't that what happened what was that movie that got made about the aids crisis oh yeah with matthew mcconaughey wasn't that, that was, what was happening in that yes yeah, so removing that all was, the alternative treatments for the aids patients yes yes yeah, so you they, have they to were, they to they were, it. yeah dallas right. buyers club Yes, yeah, so right. that was all That's about Fauci and what he did during oh, that process. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, so very much. Right, I've been that for a long time. Dallas by the club. Yeah. And in March 2020, our premier here in Queensland, she removed 15 drugs for our doctors here in Queensland so that they could not use them once coronavirus came into Queensland. So there was a list right. of 15 drugs that if doctors here used them, they could go to jail and lose their licence. Wow. And they were things oh, well. that have a long history of being used in respiratory issues and mm. immune system issues. So it's all been very bizarre for several years. And anyway... Right. And that, that's, that's what, that, but that's what was happening in that movie, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. I haven't seen it for a long time. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, I need to see it again with uh, Dr. Fraudsky online in my brain. <laughs> it was a funny, like, 80s movie. And... Yeah, it was about it. Was it about it? Was that about a naturopath, was it? Because I remember No, 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 not at all, not at all. They they were pharmaceutical drugs. Oh, they were just doctors. Yeah, they oh, were right. pharmaceutical drugs that were cheap because they didn't have the patents on them anymore. So, you know, once, once drugs get out, they're oh, like, you right. know, like the ones that we have not been able to use in the last three years for people. I thought that was about naturopaths because I remember just the guy in the office who was always, you know, trying to help and he was having everything. I thought he was using naturopathic. Oh, so they were medical drugs. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I don't, well, I there might, go, have, I there might have been some natural stuff, but I remember watching it and thinking, you're just swapping one drug for another. But I've only just read Robert F. Kennedy's book in the last year. So you know, there's, funny that... there's whole chapters on about that and how much... Uh, shenanigans went on with that fraud. Yeah, I think it's been. They've been at it for a long time. They have been. And you know, the world, the world, yeah, you know, call it the material world. Uh, it's got a history of having pretty bad leaders most of the time. Yeah. You know, it hasn't got a good reputation for having good leaders. You get a good one like JF Pan. Look what happened to him and yeah. his brother. Yeah. And you know, so. So once again, you've got Robert F. Kennedy Jr., just a bloody genius, you know, and such a good human being. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen much of him. Yeah. Anyway, David, we really should round up. Here we are. We really have. Well, I love you, Wake Up We we really have Joe Rogan to. <laughs> oh, have we? I, I had no idea. That that was so much fun. Yeah. Okay. Nice chatting, Madonna. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.